Hi, my loves. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Jessica Alexandria of Bahati Life. Thank you so much for tuning in. This is your weekly astro and intuitive forecast for the week of April 1st, 2019. It is beyond beautiful here in New Orleans, and I really have been taking some time in the morning, of course, to get out and to like walk around and to get coffee and to meet up with friends, and it really has been so wonderful like it's been so enjoyable so pleasurable and I've been the reason why I've been doing this is I feel kind of called to to do that you guys know I'm a workaholic but I've been listening to myself go figure and listening to the intuitive messages that it is that I've been pulling for you guys and applying them to myself of course and it's just been serving me so i hope that it's been serving you in the way that it's been serving me with being a lot more intentional with quality over quantity and it really has been spilling over into my magic too my magic has definitely changed and my life has changed of course it has um so this morning well this week let's talk about this week we have we're building up you know it's april 1st but we're building up into some major major changes and this is going to be happening throughout april but mostly mid to to late you know later april and basically what we're going to start seeing is you know some of our major planets are going to start going retrograde now i know some of you guys are probably going to be so irritated and annoyed by that because mercury was just retrograde but you guys know how i work and there's ways to work with everything you should never really groan over what these planets are working to provide for you and how they're working to serve you because they are serving you in the way that they that is best for your in your highest and greatest good and if you're open to it you will receive the most from it and if you are resistant to it you'll be frazzled you'll be frustrated and then you'll kind of slip down this like slippery slope and we want to avoid that so you know Jupiter Pluto and Saturn are the main planets that it is that I'm looking at here and when it comes to these retrograde periods and I see and I want to talk about this now because I want you guys to be prepared for it I think and what I'm seeing within the chart and what I'm feeling intuitively is that even though these planets are going to be retrograding and moving back and then creating a lot of like changes and shifts even Venus and the rest of the planets are going to be shifting into new signs basically what they're doing is I don't see them slowing us down Mercury retrograde did that I actually see this again happening in order to kind of restructure and I've been seeing this a lot when I'm working with readings for my friends for myself and for my clients there's this restructuring that has been happening and to be rigid and to be stubborn will have you be covered over with blessings instead of you blooming out with those blessings do you know what I mean and instead of you being able to receive the abundance it almost crashes over you or you're not prepared to receive it because it crashes in over you and over your head so what I'm seeing with these retrogrades that is that are going to occur is that they are helping you to become stronger but not in a way that is going to challenge you or break you down I think that in 2018 the way that those planets were um, aspected within the chart they actually did feel like we were crumbling so many of you guys walked out of 2018 and you were like, what the fuck was that? Even myself, I keep saying, you know, it was my best year, my worst year simultaneously. Like how, how? But I don't see that being that, that same way for 2019. In fact, I see this um, being so, so incredibly healing and so abundantly fi um, filling for, for you, for me, and for people that you love, that you spend time with and that are around you. So... The main thing that I want to talk about is this space of grounding and the space of Mother Earth. And the image that I got during my meditation this morning was Earth Goddess Mother. And it's so funny because when I see it, I wish you guys could see this right now. Like there's all these like little sparkling things that are floating around here in my courtyard. I feel like I f if I try to film it, I wouldn't be able to like actually... I wouldn't be able to actually capture it, but just trust me. There's like all these like flitting things that are in the courtyard right now and it's absolutely beautiful. You know when you see, um, you know, when we talk about this energy of like we are one, 
you know, we are not disconnected from the divine and we are not disconnected from each other. Like we're all, you know, all in alignment together. We all feel, you know, we're all, we're one. If one person feels one thing, the other, it's, as a whole, as a collective, we all kind of feel it. We're all kind of experiencing in that. That's essentially what came through during my meditation this morning. And it was this space of earth goddess mother. And the nine of pentacles has been showing up for me left and right. And it's a space of, you know, being able to enjoy the fruits of your labor. But at the same time, you know, how much work put in in order to get you to where you are and how much work will continue to happen and will continue to occur in order to provide for you now. And I'm seeing us all enter into a space where we are actually like earth goddess mother or we are earth gods, you know, if you're masculine energy. And basically it's, you know, you being in a space where you are being so provided for, but you are rooted and if it wasn't for those roots, you know, those things, those storms that really kind of knocked you down in the past or really pushed you and tested you, those that happened in order to make you root yourself so that in the future, it's literally like your strength is not temporary. It's long term. It brings longevity to your life and health and vitality. And I keep seeing this again and again in the cards. I keep seeing this again and again in the charts. I keep seeing this again and again in my in my in my dreams and my um, manifestations and my intentions and my my messages all of these things are saying the same thing and I don't even realize but I look up from you know from what it is that I'm doing and I look and I've had my hands in the dirt I have been drawn to more plants I'm drawn to slowing myself down after being sped up for so long and it's because the planets and the cosmos what's happening is we're connecting back to that earth energy in order to Create, create stability for ourselves and structure for ourselves. For those of you guys that are part of the Bahati Vibe Tribe, do you remember like a year ago, we were saying, I kept on saying like, okay, all of this is happening in order to break down, in order to build. This is not for temporary, this is for longevity, this is forever. That's, that's what has happened. That is what we've created if you guys were working your magic. Now, some of you guys are still, maybe if you're like babies, you know what I mean? Like your, your chart, sometimes in the eyes of astrology, they, the, the chart and the planets, they still are very coddling of us. And sometimes they spank you, you know what I mean? Um, depending on how immature they see you to be and how naive they see you to be and innocent. And they respect that. The planets respect that. Your angels and your guides respect that. But for your own survival and for your own goodness and for you to thrive, there are moments and there's areas of your life where you need to mature. So that's when they expect more of you. And that's when you are called out of your comfort zone. And that's what a lot of 2019 brought. But what I've been seeing, what I've been feeling is that this, um, in order to get to that nine of pentacles stage and that phase within your life, in order to work your magic, in order to prepare, you know, you do have to do things a little differently. And even with me, I've been, you know, my, my biggest thing was like boundaries and saying no and to be more aware of who and what I'm so enthusiastically saying yes to and not apologizing for, you know, this is where I draw the line and I'm not going to do this. I don't even have to, I don't even have to explain myself. So... Um, that's what it is that I'm seeing this, you know, right now. And um, the these messages that it is that I'm bringing to you guys, like, yeah, it's for the week. But the thing is, is that spirit knows no time boundaries. It knows no time constraints. So even though I'm saying, you know, this is for the week of April, April 1st, 2019, it actually doesn't just cover just the seven, you know, seven days because you guys have seen how it's, the message kind of spills over into the next week because this is an energy and this is the main thing that it is I'm seeing starting now. Now, you guys know um, I've been working a lot with Oracle decks lately and less of the tarot. But I do have both here. And these are the cards that it is I pulled out. Lenormand is one of the card, um, card decks that I've been really gravitating towards. And I really want you to focus your attention on this card, number 22, the card of choice and decisions and this, like, you know, fork in the road. Um, yeah, we have the fox here, but we'll talk about that in a minute. And yeah, we have the rider. But more than that, it's the choice. The next thing that I want you guys to pay attention to is Nature Speak Oracle, which, you know, uh, was one of the cards that I worked with earlier this morning. The first card was Sunflower, Happiness at Hand. The second one is Hot Spring, Return to the Sacred. 
third is blue moon rare opportunity and the fourth is willow veils parting and then when it comes to the tarot i have and i've pulled for us the three of cups twice the three of pentacles so this energy of number three and then also the ten of cups now what i'm seeing 100,000 percent is back again to this earth energy element of abundance of growth of thriving but also having a safe space a sacred space return to the sacred a, a sacred space that is your own that is safe for you that is fertile for you that is thriving for you or that will allow you to thrive and again, I see it almost as a garden again, um, and you creating or a space that is your own. And it kind of reminds me of when I was growing up, I spent a lot of time out in the woods. <laughs> you guys know that. Before I lived in the woods, I spent a lot of time out in the woods. And, you know, we had our backyard, but the backyard was kind of mowed down. And there was a forest when I was living in Georgia that was right behind the backyard. And I spent a lot of time out in the forest, even though I, I had the privacy of my backyard. For, for some of you guys, it's not what is known to be yours like oh this is my property oh i rent this or oh this is my garden some of you it's actually going out into a space that feels sacred and is going to give to you and that's what i found for myself i didn't find my my sacred space within my own backyard i actually found it outside of my backyard in the woods so what i'm seeing is um you know a space of you know going into this you know sacred environment that is giving to you and providing for you where you can feel safe and secure the main thing that came through to me is remembering how fertile your body is, your physical body is, and how fertile your spiritual body is and your emotional body is if you give it whatever it needs, if you give it what it needs in order to thrive. And that is water, shelter, safety, protection, which means boundaries, and feeding it and sunlight. And if you don't, that environment will not be able to foster growth. It will be barren. But there's a lot of potential there. And that's where this card of choice comes through, my love. Like this is the main thing that really stuck out, stood out to me is this card of choice. Making sure that your choices, the decisions that you're making, the things that you are saying yes to and no to, that they are actually creating that sacred space, that garden for you, that nine of pentacles energy that you are striving for, that you are working towards, or that you want to maintain. Maybe you've already achieved it, maybe you've already accomplished it, but you also have to protect it. And it's not just you, it's your generations to come. There is this meme to speaking of choices that I came across and it says, you know what, the decisions that you're making, the choices that, they, that you're making now, they determine how your children eat or if they starve. And that's how serious this is. And that, when I saw that, it resonated right away because that's where we're all at. The decisions that you're making now, they decide if you survive or if you thrive because there's a difference. So that's what I'm saying, seeing for you guys, my love, is that I think slowing down and being very intentional means that it gives you the chance to, to decide if your choices, if your decisions are making, are, if they're abundantly providing for you or if you are making them out of lack, out of fear, out of, I don't know what's going to happen, so I'm just going to jump on this. And we're all guilty of it. I just recently did it. And I was like, Jess, you of all people, like, you just said not to do this and I did it. But I'm human, so I just forgive myself. <laughs> and I accept the fact that I am human. I just like, okay. You know, that was a mistake. Maybe I would do things a little differently now. And this is a reminder to slow down before I make an even bigger decision that has an even bigger, you know, impact, that has an even bigger, you know, um, consequence to it for good or for bad. So that's what it is that I'm seeing for you guys, my loves, is, you know, really being careful and mindful of what you are working to build. Like, what are you, what are you, what are you working to build, but who are you building it with? What is their energy that they bring? What is, it, what is the energy that you bring? Because sometimes it's not others. Others can be prepared, but sometimes you don't have what it is that you need or you're not ready or you're not healed or you can't foster that a healthy and working environment or you can't foster that growth. But that's about being consciously aware of what it is that you do and what the energy that, is, that you bring. And that's what it is I'm seeing, you know, this Ten of, pen, this ten of Cups um, serving us is, you know, 
um, this joy, this happiness, this abundance. And I don't think that anybody should experience lack. You know, I've had a friend um, confront me in the past being like, you know what, God isn't real or if, you know, law of intention, if law of attraction is real or if magic is real, why are people in lack? It's because most people, well, a lot of people um, on this planet, they receive abundance and they hoard it. When in reality, if you are manifesting, if you're bringing things into your life, you should actually be in a space where out of gratitude you give back to others and you share that abundance with your family. It starts with your family first. It start, well, it starts with yourself first and then your family and your friends and, your, and then your community. So that's why we are experiencing lack in, in our environment now um, all over the world because people hoard out of fear and they hoard because they say, you know, you're less than me or I'm more than you or I'm less than you. So I have to, you know, hold on to this when in reality, we are all one. That is the only reason why there is lack because of human faults, because of human error, because if we were connected to our spiritual selves, if we, if we were connected to divine love, we would never hold on to, um, hold on to the way that anybody would ever lack. There's so much abundance to be given to everyone and everyone could have their dreams manifest. Everyone could be provided for, but it's our fear and the choices that we make, if we make that out of fear, that determine, you know, am I gonna experience lack? Am I gonna experience abundance? Do I thrive? Um, and it's, you know, again, our society and our world that is all about profit and that's what splits people up from, you know, you know, the, the working man, you know, from the person who owns the business, you know, so I could go off on that. But that's what it is that I'm seeing for this week. Um, astrologically, I really want you guys to be aware that there is a new moon on the 5th in the sign of Aries. There's going to be another video that I'm going to be uh, posting about that. Um, I'm probably going to be working a lot with goddess energy, even though Aries is so masculine and so forward and aggressive. But that is also um, an aspect of the divine feminine. But so that video will be posted up. So we'll be talking about our magic within that. So make sure that you're subscribed to the YouTube channel and you have your notifications turned on. And but when it comes to astrologically this week, the main thing that I want you guys to be aware of is the fact that Mercury, the planet of communication, is now direct. And moving to the sign of Pisces, and Pisces is all about compassion and energy and vibration and the unknown and your purpose and your destiny and connecting with the divine and connecting with the divine within you and connecting with others and that unconditional love and soulmates and higher divine. I already, I'm repeating myself. But Mercury and Neptune meet, and this is going to surge us with so much inspiration, so much creativity, so much. In a, in a way, it could be. Um, I don't say negative, but it can trip us up. If you're like me and you could be easy disillusioned by certain things, like you just see the world in pink. That's how I always see this. Like I see the world in pink. That quote always resonated with me because that's how I see the world. But um, yeah, basically you just want to like fact check for the most part, you know, don't take someone's word as bond, you know, follow your intuition. I idealistically always follow your intuition. If something doesn't seem right, it isn't. Um, don't fluff things into more than what it is, you know, don't paint this larger picture unless that is your job is to create, is to be an artist or to use your words in a way that is colorful. If you're writing books, if you're publishing, if you're holding a meeting, if you are trying to get inspired, if you're trying to connect, if you're trying to date this, this day, um, this week is really good for that. And on the 5th, that's when we had this like initiation starting with this like, okay, usher into the new, usher into the unknown usher into, okay, this is what I want, I'm gonna go out and get it. But for right now, I see us really, um, for the start of this week, kind of like grounding yourself and spending time in nature and being a lot more intentional with who and what is around you, what is it you're ultimately building, and what it is that those choices that it is that you're making, those decisions that you're making, what are they building? Is it forever, is it temporary, is it toxic, is it positive and constructive? Okay, so that's what I see for you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I know this is a little chatty, but there was a lot of information that is what I want to give to you. And I hope that you're well. I hope that you're good. Make sure that you're subscribed. If you love this video, hit that thumbs up video, those thumbs up button. <laughs> and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.